Michelle Lockie, welcome to Living on Music. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm glad you're here. And um, I've loved looking at quite an amazing ride you've had uh, in life um, and music being a, a huge part of it. And so we're going to go down the road. We'll talk a little pr present about what you've been doing, uh, some past uh, and things like that. What I am asking people, and it's because it's an interesting discussion, and a lot of the time for a music musician, the last three years of this thing we've been in uh, has helped people develop and write and create. What did the last three years do to Michelle Lockie in general? Well, um, honestly, it was really hard for me. Um, I, uh, so I, I, Part of my day job is actually manning, managing web calls like this. And right. um, so that picked up. So we were at least the first six weeks, we were 10 plus hours a day um, rotating, you know, three weeks in the office, three weeks out. We had, I don't know, it just, it was crazy for about six to eight weeks. Um, right. And uh then uh, once we got some home offices set up, we were able to rotate. And um, although I, I did have um, some difficulty, I just kind of, I don't know, the whole thing kind of messes with your psyche as a person yes. anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, there are two things that I was working on. One was the uh, the song. I had a goal of kind of writing and producing and signing a song, um, like almost all by myself. And then uh, Songwriters Association of Washington had like, um, I forget what they called it, but it was a, like a video contest, like an at-home quarantine video contest. Wow. And uh, I'm like, okay, I have some time. I'm going to see what I could put together like as fast as possible. And it, it was a silly song that I had a, a long time ago called uh, uh, I Forgot How to Write a Song. And so- oh we were kind of working in our pajamas and uh anyway because i'm at home like nobody's gonna see from like here down so <laughs> so i uh, so i did it in my pajamas and so that was fun and um the the song that i wrote was kind of an expression of you know i, I kind of felt during that time i was things were drifting away musically yes. from me somehow okay. How to write a song Should it rhyme so we get along Should I play a piccolo Or my ukulele so I can dance on my toes Does it need to be all pretty Or perhaps rather witty Or tell a lie I don't really care I really don't remember How to write the perfect line My pen won't move when it touches the paper And my fingers can't play any tunes Oh what shall I do? I've never felt so wrong between me and you i forgot how to write a song yeah and then uh in the course of six months i had um two ants die two dogs get sick and die and i had knee surgery and then we adopted a new dog oh and my it, by, and we didn't mean to adopt the new dog she just came into our life like an angel after it was so wow. yeah so music was a little difficult um during that time because my psyche wasn't as uh positive um the emotional nature of your songwriting uh yeah. is is something that is part of your psyche part of your heart and soul i love your quote when you talk about my music can range from dark to happy i usually gear toward the darker side 
And that's because it not only helps process things for you, but it also yeah. helps people who listen to the music that you write. And I know that's part of your, your goal. What about dust and ashes? Yeah. So that, um, uh, and I ha had the idea just because I, I, so I write a lot for film and TV and, and sometimes yes. when you write, you, you're trying to convey the emotion over the story. So I'm like, you know, what, what is the, you know, worst imagery I could come up with to express just how badly I can feel, you know, during right. this time. And, you know, it's covered in dust and ashes, mm. you know, I'm waiting for my turn, but I think I'm lost or I think right. I've lost, you know, um, so I, but I also had a goal, like originally I wanted to, to write, play all the instruments, right. mix and master and get it signed to um, a, a really good publisher of mine, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the best player. So I had a friend, um, she did the electric and I had another friend uh, do the acoustic because mine wasn't completely in time. Right. He's like, I'll, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. And then I added some synths to it and uh, sang all the vocals, did all that stuff um, myself, and then mixed it like a million times. I think I had 20 mixes before all was said and done because um, I'm very picky about myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, sent it to the publisher and I sent him two, two kind of two versions of a mix and a master and they liked the second one better. Um, and signed it and you know it was it was a really good accomplishment for me yes. and, and I did a music video for it too you did and uh -huh. what we're going to do is we're going to start people out on living on music to to, sh to sh see a little bit of what you did here because it is a, a really wonderfully done piece and the video and everything uh everybody here we go with Michelle Lockie <laughs> Um, and uh, kind of what she's about getting into your heart and getting into here this is a little dust and ashes Yeah, you uh, sure, certainly conveyed what that's all about. Uh, very, very well done. And that shows, again, uh, the way that you use your emotions to put them out there and then let people kind of take it and feel it themselves. And I know people will with Dust and Ashes. 2022, uh, you had a plus uh, a couple of years after this whole damn thing began for all of us. <laughs> You got nominated for the rom-com category at the Hollywood Music and Media yeah. Awards for Don't Want It to Be a Bad Christmas. And that's right. one of several Christmas things you've recently done mm -hmm. over the years. What what did Don't Want It to Be a Bad Christmas come from and how fun was going to the Hollywood Music Media Awards? Yeah, so that song originally, like, usually they want happy, happy, clappy Christmas <laughs> songs, um, which I can do and I like to do. But I was like first I wanted this to be more of a sadder Christmas song, like mm -hmm. the romantic Christmas comedy where they just break up and, you know, they're walking one, the girl's walking lonely in a park and the guy's like kicking himself down the street and, you know, what just that kind of sad thing. But then sure. it kind of turned into uh, just more of a sentimental um, oh. feeling, which, you know, it, it's not the happiest Christmas song, but it's got that kind of positive 
hope about it um, right. of them getting you know back together and you know you don't want it to be a bad christmas because it's a season of joy and you know uh -huh. all the, the lyrics so that was really fun and sure. um i had a friend of mine um his name is scott free is a really good uh producer kind of produced that and write it uh with me and mix it and the guy's vocals on there is a friend of mine um steve column we we do yes. a lot of stuff together yes um and uh yeah, I, that was fun. And then when I saw that, you know, you could send in music for the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, I'm like, why not? You know, whatever, <laughs> you know, it might not happen. And then I saw the nomination and I'm like, and they had an award show. And at first I'm like, I mean, is this for real? You know, is it what kind of, I, I had to, I wanted to investigate and I asked some of my friends in California about this show. Right. And they said, you know, it's right there in Hollywood bullet, you know, the main, whatever this Hollywood and vine capital records is like right there. And like, I have to go. I mean, there's just, you know, I have to go. Um, what am I else? Am I going to get a chance to maybe do something like that? Um, so I went, I had just met um, a new friend at uh, taxi music rally. I, I knew of her, but then we kind of clicked then she's like, just stay at my house. You can come stay at my house. And we had a great time. We went shopping. I got a new dress. Um, oh, and it, my. it was just, you know, there were, there were all kinds of writers and stars and, you know, weird Al Yankovic was there in the line ahead <laughs> of us, the paparazzi. I mean, it's just got to pose for the paparazzi. <laughs> my really God. Fun. And yeah, I didn't win, but that's okay. And it's like, my name is up there in, in uh, the recording somewhere. And no, uh, I love that. The snow is falling down. Lights twinkle through the town. And everything's so pretty. I would hug you if you'd let me. History. Do you even miss me? Could the magic of the holidays create some new memories? Oh, can we recapture the love and the laughter? Kiss beneath the Yuletide star and laugh at who we are. Some forgiveness tonight Cause I don't want it to be A bad Christmas That's great And it was the first in-person ceremony In two years too So you must have been It must have been ecstatically yeah. exciting And also wow I hope this is gonna all going to be fun But it sounds like it was wonderful And I love that yeah. um, You did something I, I don't Was it four years ago When the licensing um, when the first workshop that was morphed into the licensing songs Academy, when did you begin that? Oh, and talk yeah. a little bit about, so I know that's still a, still a big part of your life. Yeah. So um, because I learned so much about uh, music licensing and licensing for film and TV, which initially I had no idea that was a thing. Um, people just started asking me questions like over and over and over again. And I have a background. So I have a science background. I have a training development background. Right. And I'm like, I know how to put together courses and do stuff. It's like, why don't I try to put something together for people since I'm getting these same questions all over. And um, I think that might've been 2016 when I started it, somewhere around there. And uh, it started um, smaller and I had, um, I didn't want to just record something and put it on a website. So we would meet like weekly or every couple of weeks live. I teach something. People would ask questions. Um, it morphed a little bit where I was able to get um, supervisors, music supervisors to come on um, and do listening sessions and that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then I did some consulting and I did like a, a 90 day challenge goal challenge, you know, the, to help people kind of focus wow. their goals. So it's not just teaching the music business, but it's like, what's your five-year plan? You know, what, what are your goals for the year? How are you going to break those down? Sure. Um, and then try to motivate people too. Wow. Um, so that went on for a couple of years and the, uh, and we had a big Facebook group, but I met a lot of, uh, people that are still in my community today. Wow. Um, but I'm in the process, I need to revamp the materials because, you know, some, some of the, the 
it changes, right? Things change, laws change, new things come around. Um, so I'd like to do that. I have, it's sort of an ebook, sort of a guide that I'm going to put on the site. Um, I just need to go through and edit that too, because it's, it's been a while. And uh, I have a free checklist that I give people. So I, I want to restart it, but I'm just trying to be strategic about um, and focus about what I really want, because there's so many courses out there. Right. You know, and I, I just, okay, what's different about me and what, what can I offer? That's, that's um, uh, what's the word I want to use here? What, what can I offer? That's, that's different. That's going to really have a positive impact on someone. Um, but I don't promise the moon, you right. know, and sometimes I feel like a lot of people promise them everything, um, which can happen, but it's, it's, it's hard. Like I'm in the trenches still doing this every day. Yeah. So. <laughs> now that sounds, that sounds fascinating. Um, what I'd love to do, uh, Michelle, if we, if we can, uh, is have you play a little bit. And there's a song here that, um, that I know means a lot to you. It's called, I should have done better. Talk a, uh, briefly about it and then we'll hear you play a little bit of it. Yeah. So this song, um, actually my, something my brother said to me years oh. ago, kind of sparked it a little bit where, uh, you know, I tend to keep people at arm's length. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the, the lines in this. And I just kind of think, cause this is part of an album project um, where I'm going through certain phases of my life. Right. Um, and kind of looking and reflecting on those times and, and who I was, who I could be. And so this song just, you know, there's just a lot of uh, reflection on, I could have done better, maybe being a better friend, a better, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, girlfriend, it better. And even now it's like, you could be better at anything that you're doing. So right. that's what this is about. And I did a music lyric video about it too. And, um, it's kind of the first time this is being heard on acoustic <laughs> and, uh, it's only on Bandcamp right now. And I'm planning a release public strategy, but at least, um, people can have early access on Bandcamp. Oh, I love that. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Living on Music Nation, um, here's a little bit of Michelle Lockie and I should have done better. I acted in ways that I'm ashamed of. I gave myself for a little bit of love that I thought would make me whole, but it wasn't real. So how could I love you when I didn't love me? And how could I trust when I couldn't see the truth? Didn't want to hear it from you. I should have done better, but I kept making mistakes. I should have loved better, but I kept you at arm's length. I didn't know how to be the one you wanted me to be. And all I can say is I'm sorry. And I'm going to do better. Oh, wonderful. Thanks so much for that. That is, uh, that is a beauty. And again, the emotional nature of uh, Michelle Lockie's work comes to bear there. I, I really love that. Um, talk a little bit about being born back in Myrtle Beach, living in Maryland, Virginia all your life. But one thing you had in your notes, and again, it's you always suffered from shyness, low self-esteem, and low self-worth. Now, was that something generated in you when you were born was it something that came along with your family what was the reason for that kind of feeling just as a person um well to be honest i when i was three four five i think i was the victim mm. of a sexual abuser wow and um no oh, sorry that's okay i mean i i you know i kind of just remember uh feeling fine and then i remember the the cop showing up and then at that point you know, kind of distance myself from, from who I, like you're watching yourself from afar, like you're watching a movie right. and just felt wrong. Like I felt, um, most of my life that I was wrong, if that makes any sense. And that, so yeah. I was shy. I don't want to talk to people. Um, but yet I wanted to fit in and be loved, Sure, you know? Sure. Um, and I didn't, it, I mean, it took a, a really, really long time and a very slow progress to first be able to speak in front of people. 
Um, I didn't really start singing in public until like karaoke or no wait, Daisy May in yeah. <laughs> high school uh, musical and Lil then, Abner, um, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I had uh, kind of had a midlife discovery about I don't know. 15 years ago, I called a midlife discovery, not a midlife crisis. <laughs> wow. And that kind of um, opened, like, I just realized that, okay, you know, I really do like who I am. I'm, sure. you know, I, and I can do this music thing. Um, and, and actually the next uh, song that will be coming out uh, is kind of about that whole situation. It's going to be called uh, Who Hears the Broken? Oh, wow. And just about, um, yeah, part of that life and about women in general, just not feeling that they're good enough to be who they want to be. Sure. Um, sure. We all have a music video to put together for that and everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I, you know, and I don't know if, if I know that one incident did change my life, but I don't know if, if, um, it uh i would have been that way regardless because sometimes right. it's just part of you your genes and and who you sure. are sure um too but yeah that was uh and you know people shouldn't be afraid to to speak up and talk about that kind of stuff um yeah, absolutely i've talked about it you know before so sure because there is a, there is a light and there's there's a way out of yes. those situations. So yeah, that is uh, intense, and um, I yeah. can understand how that would influence um, you and be tough. You did have musical exposures early on, and it's your dad's side. It was around your grandma's piano, piano, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was she a player for years? She was a player. I mean, they play. I guess they all played in church and that kind of thing, and so the family would gather around and um, usually play uh, hymns and just uh, different songs um, surrounding the, uh, the church and that kind of thing and sing alongs and whatever. And um, two of my cousins, um, one cousin who's about six months older than me, man, he's just a musical genius. I and mean, he just, he learned everything by ear, um, uh, you know, just could play chords and piano and bass and guitar and drums and like everything. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I've got three of those three instruments I could do now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's I think that's where the exposure came from early uh on. Yeah, you taught <laughs> and you you did mention a little bit too uh about your dad playing some dueling banjos with a friend. And I'm like, yeah. well, when you were four years old, it was deliverance and that came out, you know, dueling banjos. <laughs> was it literally he was playing some some banjos with a friend? So he, he was playing guitar and I can't remember if the other guy must have been playing banjo. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I do remember them playing that whole thing. And, <laughs> that, and that and, and that was music. Music was getting into you even then. Yeah. And he he liked Gordon. Like I always liked Gordon Lightfoot because wow. he used to listen to Gordon Lightfoot and explain to me kind of about the, the song, the Edmund Fitzgerald yeah. Um, and it's still to this day, I, rem I remember, you know, hearing that and, and him telling me that description about that song and everything. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's a yeah. shame, shame to have just lost him. I, yeah. um, I interviewed him about uh, seven, six years ago, mm -hmm. and it was one of the great moments of my life, let alone my musical career. And what a sweet man. I do. If I could read your mind in my duo. And I said, could, could I do that song, Gordon? Would that be okay? And he's like, that'd be fine. I'm like, oh my God, permission. I, I knew he wouldn't say no. Right. Um, you're you're about 12 years old and you wrote your first song. What was that? Ugh. Certainly not very good. <laughs> what was I, it? What was it about though? It it was called Ocean Blues. Oh. Pretty like title. Ocean, ocean blues in my eyes. I have ocean blues in the cities, in the towns. I don't wow, know. Something like that. that. <laughs> That's terrible. And, and, you'd, and you'd sing to yourself. <laughs> I would sing but, to my, mostly to myself. And then, right. yeah, if anybody, uh, you know, I think my mom had asked me to sing it. I just felt, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I just couldn't, it just was embarrassing to me. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you're 12, you're figuring it out and, and you started learning piano. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never learned really about chords though. It was all about sheet music and music reading at the time. Right. So I never really, you know, learned about the whole, um, chord, uh, things and patterns and all that until 
2008, right. six, eight, somewhere around there. Um, cause I could read sheet music Now I couldn't, I can't just pick up something and just like play it right. with sheet music, but I could, you know, work it out and memorize it and whatever. But, um, right. Yeah. Just, uh, way back then exposed <laughs> yeah sure and and in high school in high school drama came into it what mm -hmm. what was the kind of the impetus and the thought process to to joining into the drama you know into doing kind of theater um well, i think just because i'd always want to be wanted to be musical and um probably you know seeing olivia newton john and that kind of stuff at the movies and nice hearing her music and um we always used to try when we were kids to just try to put on uh, costumes and wigs and make our own plays and right. you know, just crazy stuff. And uh, so I thought that would be a good fit for who I was as a creative person. Sure. But, and um, I I'd sang in like the back choirs and that kind of stuff, but never really did any um, uh, lead. Right. Um, until. Until then. And I was like, <laughs> well, I'm just going to try out. And no one had any idea I could sing. That's so <laughs> great, though. And you, yeah, you tried out for for Daisy May and Lil Abner and got mm -hmm. the role. Mm -hmm. Was that a huge moment for you, kind of in your in yourself yeah. to get to get a get out and get that kind of lead? Yeah, and uh, the, the the thing is, and we all watched like the the original one. Sure. And uh, of course, the drama teacher's like, "Do you think you could sing all that?" You know. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was one song that was really, um, it was really high though. And, and uh, uh, I just made the guy who played Lil Abner. I'm like, you're just gonna have to sing with me because <laughs> it's a little high, oh, but it was, my. it was fun. And, you know, my mom, uh, you, you know, she, they, nobody knew I could sing like that. And um, she tape recorded it in little tape recorders back then. And uh then she would like play it around to her friends. And I actually got mad and I took the tape and, and destroyed it or taped <laughs> over it or something. Uh, Ugh, I don't know. That's how still I had, you know, such low self-esteem. I was just like embarrassed by it, even though it was fine. Right. I, yeah. So. Well, yeah, that, 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 that can, that would continue to kind of get at you, but yeah. Um, you, you went to, George Mason, everybody, yep. we, 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 we all know it well. Um, and you put music to the side a little bit and you really got into your next phase of life in biology. Yeah. Um, how did that spur into Michelle Lockie's mind to do, to do biology? Well, I'd always been interested in science and biology, animals. Um, geez, my friends and I, we were in any mud puddle that had any oh. piece of life in it. Nice. Like all the time, you know, tadpoles, frogs, we would collect frogs and turtles and make like these forts and, you know, just was always playing in that stuff. And, um, right. um, and animals just always interest, interested me. Sure. And so, you know, I got to the point to go to college. I'm like, there wasn't really a lot of music opportunity. I don't think at that time, um, at least not at George Mason. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wasn't, it's not like I got the best grades in school because math was just like, you know, and um, uh, although George Mason had a, uh, they had some theater and acting stuff. I just was like, well, it's either music or biology. Biology seems like it'll be a good way to go. So that's right. What I did. Right. And you did. And you, you graduated with a bachelor of science in biology. Yeah. So that's a wonderful thing to get a graduation in between the time that you graduated and mm -hmm. then went to Johns Hopkins where you would continue mm -hmm. to take this. Um, you had some time aside and you lost your mother in the middle of that time. Was that, yeah. was that a biggie? Yeah. I mean, she had stage four ovarian cancer. Oh. The prognosis is like, it's like five, it's like a, uh, tw uh wait a minute. 20% chance that you'll survive five years. My mother had ovarian cancer as yeah. well. And I don't know if it was stage four, but it was close and she mm -hmm. survived it, died. You know, Good. she lived another 25 years, which is a miracle. But um, I that was a time between George Mason and Hopkins. What was going yeah. on in Michelle Lockie's mind in those three years? Were you continuing music? Were you looking at your next aspect of biology? What was what was what was the, the head that moving ahead for you? Yeah, I just, um, I was working at a lab. We did right. um, uh, 
DNA testing for, well, not DNA, DNA wasn't like PCR wasn't invented then. It was a paternity testing in a lab, oh. um, which is interesting. And uh, that went on for, I forget how many years I worked there. And then I got a job with another biotech company that was trying to do genetic therapy for cancer. Right. So, you know, I mean, those were in my twenties everybody was young at work. So we were about working, working out, going out to eat, partying, seeing bands, whatever. Um, I may have sang to myself and in the car at that time and, you know, wish I could be like a lot of all these, you know, musicians, but it, right. I just, I don't really didn't do much at all right. musically then. Um, right. I don't even think I was doing any more piano at that point. Sure. Uh, probably yeah and then when um went to hopkins uh, right I, that's what i met my husband was at that the job that i was working at there and he was doing something with hopkins too right um and so it was just kind of all that going on you know and then dealing of course with the death of my mother in between and all of that and sure you know my sister got married and wow, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And, um, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's like that, that decade was a little bit of a, a blur, a blur. And uh, I, I don't know, it's in a different time, I guess, of who I was and right. what was going on. Sure. Um, um you graduate. <laughs> yeah. Because you graduated and then not long after got, the science job at applied biosystems which you've stayed mm -hmm. you stayed at for what 14 a long years, time long time and then i love this started dabbling in karaoke yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so applied biosystems so their main campus um was in foster city california oh and so all of us would fly out there um at least once if not twice a year and then sometimes at various points during the year depending on what was going on and there was a hotel we always used to stay at and they had karaoke on Thursday nights and everybody would go to the karaoke bar. And so some of my friends are singing there and I'm like, okay, I know the one song I can actually sing in the key they play it in, I think is hotel California. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that was like my go-to for wow. years. <laughs> Beautiful. For years. And then finally one of my friends is like, you need to sing something else. And so that, then I started to try to learn other songs. The problem, the only problem with karaoke is that, um, at least I don't think you can change the key, but it's like, if they play it in the key that it's in, and that is not suitable for your, to your voice, then you think you're a bad singer because you can't sing it in that key. Right. I didn't know anything about that stuff. Then. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so right. it's like, uh, what can I sing as it is, you know, in the, the radio? Right. Um, right. Yeah, so I did that for a lot of years. Yeah, before. that was a I mean, that was a big time, it seems. Uh yeah. when you got when you left Hopkins, you had your soon-to-be husband, you guys get married in a couple of years after you started that job, but you yeah. joined the church, which I know has become a became a big deal, right? Not yeah. at that church and then a newer church later, sang in the choir, you took singing lessons, learned the ukulele. Yeah. Was, I was uh, before you played guitar? <laughs> yes. That's an interesting that's wow. what people say it's like because for for me see what um so i started to learn the ukulele around 2010 or 11 so i've always had a lot of back problems and um i remember sneezing one time and i just felt something blow and i already had disc issues and right. uh, anyway i ended up having to have surgery and oh. um after like a lot of pain and whatever yes. i'm like i just need to do something that's like simple and fun what could i do Right. Um, I mean, by that time I, I had already been dabbling in some other music stuff. I'd gone to Nashville and, and took some writing programs and stuff sure. there, but the ukulele just, I'm like, it's got four strings. It seems easy. <laughs> just going to learn that right now. <laughs> oh, that's great though. Well, you, and then you took up piano again. So things, music yeah. seemed to be surging back into you. Yeah. Yeah. And during those, um, so the, the two, the late, mid 2000s onward it started kind of building like you said yes. the choir at the church um yes. eventually got on the actual worship team which are the individual people in the band wow. um met uh the first guy i produced an album with who kind of taught me the ropes about singing in a 
um, in a booth and writing popular music. And right. I mean, that's the very first song that I, not the first song I wrote when I was a kid, but the first song I wrote legitimately, um, I had a lot of lyrics to it already and it was like all over the place. So we tightened that up, recorded it and put it out. And I think that was when I finally started to realize that, okay, maybe I can sing, you know, I, I, can, I, this, it took me a while to hear myself. Cause when you hear yourself back, you're like, Ooh, you know, who is that? Right. But there's a time when you're, you kind of, you get used to how it com- sounds this way and how it sounds from a speaker. Sure. And I was like, I'm like, okay, maybe I can do this. And we just kept producing music together. And wow. And then I just started to branch out after I met, um, you know, other people and yeah. Yeah. And, and around t- in two thought you said around, there was a stretch where you were going down to Nashville and you were doing mm-hmm. writing and projects. So that became, I mean, that is a, a, not an uncommon thing for songwriters that must've felt kind of neat to be able to do to go to Nashville is a big deal. Yeah, that was, that was fun. And, and, you know, different because back then I'm like, well, songs are stories with details and, and, um, emotions but you tell a story you tell the details you tell you know whatever right um and that's sort of how i was writing my earlier songs are um still emotional and not as much storytelling right and i'm getting back to that a little bit with the next the who hears the broken song coming out but anyway um yeah it wasn't until i uh 2011 ish 12 um that i learned about the whole writing for film and tv thing Yes, I was just about to ask that. That and that turned into that <laughs> yeah. turned into an amazing thing. I mean, it's you like got... I had no idea. <laughs> wow. Right. And what was the key to getting it to, to opening that door? So I um I joined Taxi Music. Yes. Which um even though they so there's a yearly member fee, but that gets you into the conference for free. There's a free conference every year in LA. And then they have, they put like opportunities and you can submit to them for like $5 an opportunity and they have screeners and then the screeners, if they like the music, they'll send it on. If they don't, they'll give you a critique back. Right. Um, so it was the third year of that conference, maybe even the fourth year, 2008, nine, 10. Right. Yeah. So 2010 ish, I was on the taxi forum. They have a free, um, uh, forum that all the writers get on and people that they just you can, there's all kinds of information you can chat to a bunch of people right and i remember critiquing somebody's song and going well it's not really telling a story and there aren't many details and this that and the other and this guy this guy that i was critiquing comes back he's like oh no you don't write that way from in tv you know you can't put details in there because a b and c i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> anyway he became like he's like one of my best friends now so you know all these years and um so then I met all those people online and then we went to the rally the next year. We got to see everybody in person. I got to meet them all, um, started collaborating with people, right. um, collaborating wow. with people that, that were doing better than I was and knew the ropes. And that really just kind of helped me. And I'm very oh. fortunate that they were open to somebody as naive about it as I was at that time. Right. Um, right. And it just kind of, uh, blew up from there. I mean, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. Amazon Prime's Good Girls Revolt, which I yeah, thought, was what was the, the, uh, the thing with the young Sheldon? Oh, so, um, and, and I, it was a, it was a promo for the show when it first came out, there was a promo, um, and our song was at the very end of that promo. Um, you could hear the piano and the guitar come in and then just like the brief vocals at the end of it. Wow. Um, so that was fun. Um, and that was a, a song that I had come up with and part partnered with a buddy of mine, Paul Otten, right. who we fine tuned the lyrics and he produced it. Um, he, he's the lead on the, um, the original one. And I did a, a live version with the church band at church that I on an album, but yeah, that was cool. The only problem is with that is like, I didn't get to see it live. (laughs) You know, you hear about it like after the fact, then you're on the internet trying to find stuff. And yeah, that was, uh, that was good. That, uh, and the good rules revolt. That was, that was a nice, um, chunk of time. They use that. song. I don't know if you saw that clip or not, but Uh, we'll have it on. Yeah. It's like, uh, it was like 
you could hear it really good in the beginning and then um i think it went on for like three minutes under the dialogue with vocals which is so much fun tonight. I'm so glad you stood up your date. <laughs> oh, my dad is going to be livid. You stood up your dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a job interview. <laughs> Since I'm not marrying Chad, daddy thinks I need to work somewhere with more appropriate men. What do you think? I love my job. That shows that the music part of your life was surging up and still going forward. Second and third mm -hmm. EPs, uh, third, second and third EP released in like 2011 to 14. Um, you kept going and then you had the back surgery, right? Around 2011. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's when things, yeah, that's, and that probably is, has that helped you since? What the uh, back surgery? Yeah. 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 But other parts of my body have fallen apart. So, you know, <laughs> you're a human being so but the, yeah the back's fine it's just yeah other things the other know. things right exactly <laughs> um that's that's wild um through the 2000s things have continued to go along how often do you write do you continue to write um so i only i always have ideas it's kind of slowed it had slowed down during the pandemic and then um right now i'm kind of doing covers because there's a been a big demand for reimagined covers right um so i've been partnering with several people and getting a few of those out to see if we can get them signed yeah um but with my new album i'm at least working on five to seven songs and i wanted it to come out by the fall sure so um yeah so i mean i'm always writing down ideas but it, it's i haven't really had focused time to just sit and kind of just work on one thing from beginning to end. I usually do it in spurts. Sure. Um, and then I get together with whoever I'm collaborating with and I'll email them something. They'll email me something back. It's like, well, here's, you know, then that's how I usually write is just over the internet. <laughs> right. <and> right. <laughs> um, you, and over the last, you know, 10 years or so you've had, you had your Michelle, Michelle duo group, mm -hmm. right? That was, which, which, who was that with? Michelle Murray. Oh, nice. That's her name. Yeah. And she, uh, I'm thinking about getting back, uh, practicing again and, and make, start gigging. Cause I haven't played out really. Well, I played my concert was in 2021, but, um, I haven't right. done any regular gigs since. So I think I'm going to start ramping that up, uh, for me and then for us. Right. Duo. Well, cool. I can't wait yeah. to hear more, more how that goes. Yeah. 2014. Also, it sounds like there was a big moment, which was the, the John Lennon song contest win. Yeah. Talk about tin feathers for <sighs> a second. And then we're going to play a little clip of your footprints. Yeah. So tin feathers is, uh, me and Paul on, and right. he's from Cincinnati. And, um, yeah, so that song, you know, I, I wanted to write something that was, um, both spirit can be considered spiritual and it can be considered like, you know, relationship wise, you know, somebody has got your back. Somebody is, is there for you. And, um, so, so that song was born and, um, I decided to, to submit it to the John Lennon song contest. And for the, uh, the final winning, it's like a, once you get to a certain level in that contest and it's like a, a vote voting thing to see sure. who's like, um, <clears throat> once i didn't i want i guess the grand prize is just below the the big 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 prize i don't know right sure um so that was great we got like that's where i got a lot of my gear from oh wow because <laughs> they send you so much stuff uh, even with that it's like you know five thousand dollars worth of equipment um which was awesome um, oh that's great and that's the song that was you know in the young sheldon so yeah that's what i was gonna ask i yeah. thought that was that was the one well yeah. everybody here you go another little <laughs> example of some wonderful stuff michelle has done uh this is with ten feathers and a little bit of your footprints <laughs> your footprints follow me Into the dark And when I'm asleep 
they stop the shadows in my heart Oh, but I don't worry I don't worry, no Oh, but I don't worry Cause wherever I go footprints i love that and the fact that it was that it that it was on that um young sheldon thing had to be again another wonderful you know ascension for you and in music as you were going along you had another duo blue cedar which was formed did some shows right in, mm -hmm. in, in 2015 ish um 2019 was your fifth record which i believe courageous me yes and that had <laughs> That had to be, you had the 2022 Courageous Me concert to the the big one, right? Uh, was, that, was that your, <laughs> was that your idea? Yeah. So in the wow. fall of 2019, I, I mean, I just, I've been trying to listen to, you know, that small voice that kind of kicks you um, and puts ideas in your head. And, and I was just thinking I should have a concert slash fundraiser tell the stories behind some of the songs I've written over the last right. however many years. Right. And then um, I raise awareness for pulmonary hypertension, which my niece has. And, um, and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. I'm like, if I don't say this out loud, it's never going to happen. And so I uh, told the, the current worship or the worship leader at that time is a um, friend of mine, Dave Holly um, about it. He's like, I think we can make that happen because, you know, they have a whole band and they're all friends of mine. So um, they all agreed to, to learn the songs and um, we had a whole program and everything set up and it was canceled two days before the lockdown for COVID. <laughs> Boom. So, yeah. So, um, but well, the good thing was the church, um, uh, because of, of COVID and the lockdown, they came up with a really, really nice streaming system. Right. And so by the time we were able to have it, we were able to stream it too. And Perfect. I was able to put together, you know, some videos that went along as we were singing live and, and edit the storybook that went along with um, Courageous Me and all the stories uh, that wow. went along with that. Wow. So, and yeah, ra we raised about 50% um, uh, of that I gave to the Pulmonary Hypertension Foundation. Oh, um, and so they were grateful for that. And I just want to get the story of my niece out there, which is we tell in the, the concert. Um, and the replay of that is on YouTube. There's yes. like an edited replay. Yes, there is. Yeah. Oh.
was wonderful. You also, there was a mention of you starting to lead worship at church. Yes. Um, wow. So that was another biggie. Like, <laughs> can I do this? Because <laughs> um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a preacher and I just wanted to be, you know, authentically me and um, give it a try. And so, you know, you get to pick the songs and then um, I'll, I usually will play guitar on them, sometimes not, depending on the song. Um, but that's been another fulfilling aspect of things. And, you know, people will come up to me afterwards and say, you know, I can really relate to what you're saying. And because um, I say it in a different way, you know, I, I don't sugarcoat things. And I just, I don't know, people think I have a interesting, dry sense of humor, which they like. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> That's um, well. That's so, that's yeah. That's yeah. that's that's a that's a really neat part of you, I'm sure. Um, before we bid a fond to do, I I want to play a little bit of of courageous me. Okay. Uh, again, right in the Michelle Lockie uh path of of songwriting. Talk a little bit about what this song means. Yeah. So I mean, it, the song starts out pretty solemn, you know, and and like um and down you know because uh you're just trying to combat combat these um forces that are just trying to keep you down and keep you away from doing things and and uh, living the life you want to live um and i needed a way to kind of express that i may be struggling but i'm still going to fight through that fear sure. um and be courageous about it and so that's where that song uh um came about and um you know, i've gotten a lot of good feedback about that song and my my friend's um niece uh has some uh disabilities and she just really loves it and it really oh. helps her a lot and um so that's yeah. where that came from and i did a video but it was more like just a it was kind of pictures of my my journey along the way it wasn't like a real music video so to speak but more of a lyric video um but yeah that uh and that album too i there's a couple of pretty personal songs on there and then like two covers uh that i did and um a live performance of your footprints at church i love right. that at worship so, oh that is something yeah. well and I, what i didn't mention as well as prior to that a few years back you got two whammy nominations living on music got nominated this year um nice. for, for music media and yeah. last year i'm up against media that's been going for 30 years though so i don't really have much of a shot but it was wonderful to be there and see a number of my guests oh, yeah. also nominated and win a number of things um before we say uh goodbye ladies and gentlemen let's Walk down the road of Michelle Lockey again um, and a little bit of Courageous Me.
reach for the chance to take a step, walk from my grave, cause he's not Well, look, Michelle, Courageous Me, yes, you're exhibiting your emotional feelings, but the fact that that young woman, the niece you talked about, was motivated and felt that song, that's what we're talking about. That's what you're talking about. You want to solve yourself, you want to help yourself get the emotions out, but how wonderful that people would feel like that about your music. Isn't yeah. that, didn't that make you feel pretty special? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we do it for right yes. i mean hopefully <laughs> um uh just to to move people and that's why i'm writing the stuff that for the new album um is not film and tv f- focused right uh and it's you know more personal focus because i know there are other people going through this stuff um as well and uh the um the yeah, i should have done I should have done better. I've already got that signed by a publisher. Oh. Um, and I need to, the next one coming out, I, I hope that, uh, it, I think it's going to, and I hope that it reaches a lot of people. Um, I just need to get my stuff together and get that music video done because I've got so much footage. Right. Like, right. Well, look, I, living on music <laughs> is going to be uh, be behind you now. And uh, whenever you're doing stuff, um, you know, I, I'll, I'd love to get the word out to it, at least our nation and let them know what most Michelle Lockie is doing. Um, but I want to thank you so much for being on Living on Music. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always good to connect with people and, you know, just know you got one more friend now in the music community or maybe more after this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you never know. But what I love, I love again and again. We've talked about it throughout the show, and even before I talked about it, is that your emotional self, which has been through a lot, it started mm-hmm. with a big hit, but you've been going through your life and ascending in different ways. And I love to see that music is a part of that ascension, and you're helping people too. And I'm sure the music is getting across to a lot of other people. But I'll be right behind you as we continue to go along. But uh, once again, thanks for being here, and let's keep in close touch. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. All right. My pleasure. Appreciate we'll, it. we'll talk soon.